Hey guys, welcome to another look back over New Zealand's biggest gap year, where a few years ago, my partner Robin and I did 365 days of 365 activities in New Zealand. And on this day 189, Robin and I do some jet boating and gold panning at the gold mining centre uh, between Cromwell and Queenstown. So check out the video to see what that experience is like. And then at the end, I'm going to go through some of the comments and questions you guys had the first time round when we published this video. So I'll see you at the end. This morning we are waking up at the beautiful Bannock Burn Domain Camp, which is located in the lovely town of Cromwell. And we're having a really epic day today as we're going to be diving into the mining history of the area by jet boat, which makes it even more epic. The Goldfields Jet and Mining Center is located on the Kawarau Canyon which is absolutely beautiful with stunning cliffs on both sides and milky blue water at the bottom. It's a picture perfect area and as soon as we arrive we strap on a life jacket and head toward the jet boat. We're meeting our jet boat driver called Peter who is an ex jet boat racer so this promises to be a pretty wild ride and when we get down to the jet boat it's actually a tiered seated jet boat meaning that everyone gets awesome views all the way and we're super surprised by how many people fit in these things it fits 13 passengers. At high speed, we blast down the Kaurau Gorge, having near misses with the canyon walls on either side. It's really crazy how close to the rocks this boat can get without touching it. And of course, jet boat rides in New Zealand are famous for 360 spins, meaning that the jet boat can actually turn a full 360 degrees on one point. The first part of the tour goes downstream to the Bannockburn Arm, which is actually a part of the river that used to not be accessible by boat until the Clyde Dam was constructed. And then we head upstream past all these gold mining relics on the side of the gorge. And there's so many awesome photo opportunities as well. But as you can see, it's a little hard to take photos on a jet boat. The first piece of history that we're learning today is that jet boats were invented right here in New Zealand in 1952 by a guy called William Hamilton and this is why quite a few of the jet boats have something called a Hamilton engine to pay homage and tribute to that guy. On top of being super maneuverable, jet boats are also awesome at going at super fast speed on very shallow water, which helps our tour guide to actually get us to really really remote places in no time. Amongst all the thrills, Peter stopped the jet boat multiple times to give us more insight about the geological feature of the area as well as quite a lot of fun fact about the mining history of the area. But one of the best part of the jet boat is that we are getting absolutely soaked but every 2 seconds we are taking some high speed making us feel like we are in the biggest natural hair dryer of the world. So we are getting soaked and then dried and soaked and then dry. Amongst all, I'm pretty happy that we've been given a really good splash jacket. But the Goldfields Jet isn't the only thing that's here at the Goldfields Mining Centre. There's also a guided tour which you can do with some gold panning. So that's what we're jumping straight onto as our next activity. We are meeting Bruce who is our passionate and super knowledgeable guide. And we're learning all about the history of the Otago Gold Rush. The Otago Gold Rush happened in the 1860s and brought people from all over the world here to New Zealand to seek out gold and earn their fortunes and that's exactly why towns like Queenstown, Arrowtown and Cromwell exist. Bruce shows us a mock-up of an old mining settlement which has loads of different old machinery of how they used to extract gold back in the days. And one of my favourite machines here is the sluice gun which throws high-powered water into the stream blasting away the lighter materials to hopefully reveal some gold underneath. It's a lot of fun to play with and a lot of these things you can actually check out yourself if you go on a self-guided tour around the Goldfields Mining Center as well, which takes between half an hour to an hour. But next it's on to the moment we've all been waiting for, which is panning for gold. First up, Bruce is giving us the technique of gold panning and explaining us all the tips and tricks that he has learned over the years panning gold around the area. 
One of the really cool things is that he's letting us pan gold ourselves afterwards and gives us ground from the canyon so there is actually a chance for us to find gold. Some of us in the group really really want to find gold but Laura and I found absolutely nothing and this is why Laura and I decide to go for a beer just to drink our sorrows away a bit like the gold miner used to do back in the days I'm pretty sure. Plus there is a lot of good food in Cromwell. Um, there is an American dude in the tour with us. He really wants, this guy really, really wants to get some gold. <laughs> um, he's, re he's been asking questions the whole tour. So how much, how much gold can we get? How much, how much that worth? How much gold does people get usually doing this tour? I think, I think he misunderstood the fact that this tour here is not about making you rich. It's about making you richer off the ledge. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video and that gave you a better idea of what that experience of jet boating and going to the Goldfield Center is like. And we're gonna go through some of the comments you guys had when we published the video the first time around. So we had a comment from Chasing Adeline saying, awesome video guys, would love to do the jet boat one day. That looked like so much fun. I thought you were going to lose your GoPro. So yeah, that's that's always a, a little bit of a risk when you do take your GoPro on these types of tours. And actually a lot of tours now in New Zealand have started to ban GoPros um, from being taken on their tours because obviously they don't really want to be responsible for people losing or breaking their camera gear. So bear that in mind when you are coming to New Zealand. If you do want to do some filming and you know you have it in your mind that you want to do filming of a specific activity, just make sure you double check on the website or get in contact with the company to make sure that you are actually allowed to do that. Um, okay, moving on to another question. We have Sharad saying, is shot over better than the Carol Raw? So um, yeah, there are two different types of uh, different jet boat tours that are based in Queenstown. So actually the, the jet boat tour that you saw during this episode, that is also on the Kawarau River, um, but that's further upriver than, so, than the other Kawarau jet boat tour, which is based in Queenstown, and that is basically called K-Jet. That's how people know that one. And then there's the Shotover Jet, which is on the Shotover River, again, based in Queenstown. So which one is better? That really depends on what better means to you. So the K-Jet jet boat tour tends to be the more affordable tour. It goes on both um, the Shotover and the Kawarau River and goes across Lake Wakatipu. So you're going through a few different types of sceneries on that jet boat tour. And that also includes all the, of course, 360 degree spins and near misses with the side of the river and tree, tree trunks and that sort of thing. That sort of the scenery that you get to see is more sort of, um, flat braided rivers and you're going a little bit through trees a little bit on the lake that sort of thing and then in comparison shot over jet has perhaps more dramatic scenery you're in an actual deep river gorge with sort of rocky walls and the near misses that they have on those jet boat tours are you know quite close to the side of the river gorge and you're sort of going close to rock edges and that sort of thing so that tends to have a more you know that's a more I would say epic sort of scenery to do that in but on the other hand that does tend to cost a little bit more to do that tour so that's basically a quick rundown of how those jet boat tours differ if you head over to nzpocketguide.com we do have a comparison of all the jet boat tours in Queenstown so you can check it out on basically it's called the five best jet boat tours in Queenstown and you can you can see what the differences are between them all. And for any more co comments or questions of your own, you can put them in the comment section below or join us for one of our live Q&A sessions that we do every single Sunday at 8 a.m. New Zealand time. And if you want to know what time that is, well, you might as well just click on the subscribe button and the notification bell so you get a notification before we go live. That's the easiest way to do it. All right, guys, I will see you in the next video.